going through my mind was to get help because every one of them were bleeding really bad. So I was trying to get in a rush to get there. He and his extended family, 17 in all, were traveling in three separate vehicles in a remote mountainous area south of the U.S. border. According to reports, Mexican officials suspect cartel hitmen are behind the attack. When even the cops turn him away, he crawls under a tarp to die. I don't know what kind of power it is, and then when they talk about the mental strength that you have as a human being, because at this point, this is when, however long I was laying there, um, pretty much just waiting to die, something inside of me, that strength came to me and said, you got family, you got kids, get up. We have Devin, he ran all the way home and he says that the rest of the kids that are still alive are up under a tree. And then we were taking him to the hospital, so I was so glad. To be honest with you, my boy's a hero simply because he gave his life for his brothers and, and sisters. A lot of people dream of exploring new countries and getting the chance to experience cultures that are different from their own. But when it comes to traveling outside of your own country, it is always important to be aware of your surroundings and also aware of any risks or dangers that may be involved. When you know the risks, you may end up deciding that you don't want to be traveling to this particular spot after all. For much of Mexico, it is simply way too dangerous for Americans to travel there. This is due, in part, to heavy cartel presence. And yet, many Americans still choose to go there anyway. So why is it considered so dangerous for American tourists to travel to Mexico? So dangerous, in fact, that that government actually warns against it. Well, there are a lot of different factors involved. In addition to the drug cartel activity, there's also just the general high rates of crime, and as well as a lot of corruption. Various regions in Mexico are controlled by powerful drug cartels, such as the Sinaloa, Jalisco New Generation, and Los Zetas. These cartels engage in violent territorial disputes, often resulting in shootouts, kidnappings, and murders. Tourists can easily get caught in this violence without even knowing it. But that's not all. Cartels and organized crime groups sometimes target foreigners for kidnapping and extortion. They do this because they believe that they can secure large ransoms. Tourists may be seen as easy targets due to their perceived wealth and unfamiliarity with local security measures. As far as general crime, common crimes affecting tourists include pickpocketing, robbery, and assaults. In some areas, violent crime rates are high, with incidents occurring in both urban and rural areas. Tourists may find themselves in unsafe situations, especially if they venture out into less secure neighborhoods. Also, tourists are often targeted by scams, including ATM fraud, fake taxis, and overpriced services. These scams can sometimes escalate into more serious confrontations. Because many American tourists are not familiar with the way of life in Mexico, they may unknowingly stumble into an unsafe situation and not realize it until it's too late. A lot of people might not realize how serious the corruption issue in Mexico really is. Corruption is widespread within some local police forces and government officials. Tourists might encounter corrupt officers who solicit bribes or fail to provide enough protection. This lack of reliable law enforcement can leave tourists at risk and without anyone to turn to for help if they need it. In many areas, police presence is limited and response times can be slow. In some regions, local authorities might avoid confronting cartels due to fear or corruption, leaving tourists without effective protection in case of emergencies. Finally, there is the issue of political and social unrest throughout much of Mexico. This can be a risk that a lot of tourists may overlook. Mexico often experiences political protests and civil unrest, which can sometimes turn violent. Tourists caught in these situations can face dangers from both demonstrators and law enforcement. Even knowing all of these things, it seems unlikely that to keep tourists from traveling to Mexico altogether. Keeping this in mind, it is important for these tourists who are determined to visit Mexico to at least be aware of the risks involved, including hearing about some of the experiences that other tourists have faced in recent years, especially the cases that involve kidnappings and other forms of shocking violence. Americans get kidnapped by the Mexican cartel more often than you may realize. In March of 2023, a woman from South Carolina named Latavia Washington McGee was one of four Americans who were seized by traffickers in Mexico. She and her friends had traveled there to get a type of cosmetic surgery that is not practiced in the United States. During her captivity, she was tortured and two of her friends were killed in what was believed to be a case of mistaken identity. 
she and the other survivor later spoke to Anderson Cooper from CNN about the traumatizing experience. You finally arrived at this destination. What, what was it? It was a... It was a house. Put a lot of Mexicans outside with guns. Putting on Diablo mask, red plastic mask. They, putting, they put masks on? Yeah, I was putting the guns to our head, telling us not to look up, things like that. Had you gotten any kind of medical treatment? The cartel took us to a clinic. After we left from the spot where they was questioning us at. They told us, they was like, um, I guess after they kept asking us and our questions, our answers never changed. They said, um, well, we're gonna get, we gonna get y'all some help. Can you imagine being in a foreign country, not speaking the language, and all of a sudden, your life is at the mercy of a violent criminal group? That's the situation that these people found themselves in. And what kind of treatment did they give you? They put my leg on a two by four and then they stitched it up. They are lucky to have survived this whole ordeal, considering their friends never made it back from that trip. They aren't the only tourists who had a brush with death while traveling in Mexico. Two American bird watchers were traveling throughout Mexico in April of 2022 when they came face to face with masked men holding weapons. It's not clear if these armed men were part of the cartel or if they were trying to determine if the tourists were. Either way, the whole experience is absolutely terrifying, and it was caught on camera. These bird watchers expected a quiet vacation, taking photos of tropical wildlife. So nothing prepared them for the nightmare they experienced in Mexico. Oh my God, they have a gun. Jesus, Jesus. Go, 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 no, go, no, go. no, 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 please, 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 please. I still remember seeing down the barrel of the one guy's gun thinking like this is it so how did these two men find themselves in such an incredibly dangerous situation it started when aaron paysant and logan howard were driving nearly 3,000 miles from indiana to cancun looks like there's a town up here uh, around village. they're on a back road looking for birds to photograph when out of nowhere a truck races past oh my god they have guns gunmen leap out Jesus, Jesus, go, 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 no, go, go, no, 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 please, 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 please. Logan does his best to hide his terror while Aaron speaks to the gunman as best he can. But neither Aaron nor Logan speak Spanish, which makes communicating with the armed men and understanding what's wrong difficult and the whole situation all the more intimidating. Please, what? No, Espanol, please. The gunman reassure the Americans that they're not in danger. No, 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 they are both understandably still terrified, and their fear is evident by their shaking hands and unsteady voice. But Aaron's not convinced the danger has passed. Please don't kill us. Logan explains why they're so far off the beaten path. We just want to see birds. Do they demand anything from you? Believe it or not, they didn't demand anything from us other than get out of there. They told us that there was more people further up the road, and if we stayed on that road and didn't get out of there, they, they literally signaled. <laughs> Uh, okay. Can we go? Yeah. It's possible that these armed men were warning Aaron and Logan about a different cartel group, a more dangerous one that wouldn't let them off with just a warning. The nightmare spooked them for the rest of the trip. We were really scared from that point on, like putting chairs against the hotel door, to, like at night, and. I couldn't sleep at night. The drama happened in 2020, but the video has just gone viral. So who were the gunmen? Could they be a civilian patrol keeping a lid on the drug cartels? The mystery may never be solved. Did you think you were going to lose your lives? Absolutely. Definitely. Go, 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 no, 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 no. And then there was Dustin Jackson another American who was with his wife and preparing to go home after a perfect vacation in Cancun, Mexico. But the trip ended on a very sour note when he was kidnapped by his own taxi driver. All right, now to this story. Photos tell a horrifying story, an American tourist in recovery back in the U.S. and telling his story tonight about a nightmare in Mexico. He was mugged and left for dead. 
State Department heightening its warning to Americans traveling to Mexico where violent crimes are on the rise, even in tourist destinations. The ordeal that this man went through is so shocking and traumatizing that nobody would blame him if he never wanted to discuss it with anybody ever again. But this man said that he believes that the reason he survived near death was so that he could help others by telling his story and giving them a warning about the danger that exists for Americans in Mexico. I'll never forget that feeling. It was the scariest feeling in the entire world, but you're just done. Mugged in Mexico and left for dead. Dustin Jackson and his wife were waiting for their flight home after the perfect vacation in Cancun. With hours to spare, Jackson hops in a cab for chewing tobacco, but the nearby gas station doesn't have any. He says the taxi driver, who later charged a few grand to his credit card, kidnaps him. Dustin hadn't planned on going far. This was supposed to just be a quick trip to the nearby convenience store, where he was going to pick up the chewing tobacco and then head back to his family, but none of it went as planned. He says there's going to be a, just a grocery store. So I get out and I'm like, Okay, as I'm walking in, then boom, lights up. Next thing I know, I am waking up in a ditch. They filleted off the entire bottom of my foot. So they like went to cut my Achilles tendon and they missed. And instead of hitting it, they hit the bottom of the foot and just and then my foot just flapped around. This whole experience is almost so gruesome to even imagine. Kidnappers cutting the Achilles heel is actually pretty common. It is so that their victim will be unable to run away. But in this case, they messed up and cut off the bottom of Dustin's foot instead. Can you imagine that sort of indescribable pain? They were trying to cut my tendons and leave me for dead. My shoulder's completely fake now. There is no more real bone in there. And the doctors think it's for them throwing me out of a vehicle, probably. Now dark and in the middle of nowhere, Jackson, who doesn't know Spanish, stumbles around for hours, screaming for help. At this point, Dustin has lost a dangerous amount of blood. He's in very serious condition and needs medical help right away. But perhaps worst of all, He's lost and disoriented, and it could be only a matter of time until he is made into a target by another violent criminal group. Nobody wants to help him. When even the cops turn him away, he crawls under a tarp to die. I don't know what kind of power it is, and then when they talk about the mental strength that you have as a human being, because at this point, this is when, however long I was laying there, um, Pretty much just waiting to die. Something inside of me, that strength came to me and said, You got family. You got kids. Get up. And so, despite the intense pain he was experiencing, Dustin struggled to his feet and pushed on. With everything left in him, Jackson gets up and keeps going and survives thanks to help from a female police officer who stops, renders aid, and eventually gets him back to the airport where he says he meets another guardian angel. Dustin says that he was lying on the airport floor begging for help and yet not one person stopped. Everyone just ignored him until finally someone saw him and felt compassion for him. And finally, this lady from Africa, her flight got canceled. That's why she stopped. Jackson's had four surgeries. He can no longer play catch with his daughter or swing a golf club with his son, but knows he miraculously survived for a reason. I take the little times in life. I, take, I, I don't take them for granted anymore. You just don't know what life's gonna bring you. So never give up, keep going. Everybody has a purpose. So who were those men that kidnapped and brutally attacked Dustin? Were they rogue criminals or part of a cartel? And if so, which one? We may never know, but what we do know is that they could have very easily killed Dustin and he would have never seen his family again. This is yet again an example of what you're putting on the line by traveling as a tourist to Mexico, even in an area like Cancun, where most people consider things to be pretty safe. That's simply not always the case, and you can never be too careful. A 13-year-old American boy was a survivor of another attack directly linked to the cartel that took place in Mexico in November of 2019. This traumatized young boy lost his mother and two of his brothers in this horrific ordeal. Then, he did his best to save the lives of his other siblings by hiding them in a bush while he went to get help, just praying that God would let them live. There's five kids sitting on the side of the road, got shot in the mouth, shot in the foot, shot in the leg, they just started hitting the car at first, like with a bunch of bunch of bullets. These are the horrifying sights and sounds. The bodies are burnt inside the vehicle. Of a brutal massacre that shocked the nation. This is a case that truly shows how remorseless and evil the Mexican cartel can be. They aren't afraid to murder.
murder and inflict unimaginable terror on the innocent. In fact, in this case, all of the victims were children or women. This is for the record. Nita and four of my grandchildren are burnt. Shut up. Three American women and six children murdered, allegedly gunned down by members of a drug cartel. Some of the survivors seen here, all members of the same fundamentalist Mormon community, alive in part because of this brave 13-year-old boy, hailed a hero after walking 14 miles to get his wounded family members help. Now, nearly a week after the incident, Devin Langford is speaking out alongside his father. This interview is particularly hard to watch because it was done such a short time after this horrific massacre. At this time, poor Devin is still trying to process all the trauma he went through, along with the fact that he has lost three family members. After my mind was to get help because Every one of them were bleeding really bad, so I was trying to get in a rush to get there. He and his extended family, 17 in all, were traveling in three separate vehicles in a remote mountainous area south of the U.S. border. According to reports, Mexican officials suspect cartel hitmen are behind the attack. But why would they target a family, including a lot of young children? Yeah, they were big guns and they were, well, they were wearing masks. I was trying to duck down and my mom got everybody down. It felt real scary and it felt like a lot of bullets. Devin, along with his brothers and sisters, were in one of the vehicles. His mother, Donna, desperately trying to get them to safety. Yeah, the car didn't work, so she was just trying right there, starting the car as much as she could, but I'm pretty sure they shot something so the car wouldn't even start. Devin says that the last thing he remembers, his mother telling him, was to get down right now and to pray. Donna and two of her children, 11-year-old Trevor, and three-year-old Rogan were killed, but Devin was able to save the rest of his siblings. Afterwards, they got us out of the car, and they just got us on the floor, and then they drove off. We walked a little while until we couldn't carry him no more, and so we put him behind a bush, and I wasn't hit or nothing, so I started walking. When Devin realized that he didn't have the strength to carry his little siblings any further, he decided to hide them instead while he went off on his own to get help. He had no idea if he would make it or if his siblings would still be there when he returned, but he had to try. He set out in search of help, still afraid his life was in danger. Walking all those miles was if there was anybody else out there trying to shoot me or following me. I was trying to hide myself the best I could under a bush. I pray a lot. Afterwards, I got back up and started walking again. Pray for a safe journey and that they're still alive and that they can make it. Devin had to walk 14 miles in the heat to get help. He was eventually able to make contact with members of his family. We have Devin. He ran all the way home and he says that the rest of the kids that are still alive are up under a tree. And then we were taking him to the hospital, so I was so glad. To be honest with you, my boy is a hero simply because he gave his life for his brothers and, and sisters. There were over 200 rounds in total that were fired at these families' vehicles. This is what ultimately took the lives of three women, all mothers, and many of the children. The whole thing was a bloody massacre, is what it was, on innocent lives the most innocent. Eight children survived. Some were taken via helicopter to a hospital in Mexico and then later across the border into Arizona by ambulance. Christina's baby is alive. Praise God. We got faith. She is alive. Do you understand me? God is so good. You don't even know. The families who were targeted have dual citizenship, which means that they weren't just tourists traveling to Mexico. They were citizens of both Mexico and of the United States. They had also lived in this border region for many years and never suspected that something like this would happen to them. But that's because the older generations of this family made a home for themselves here before the cartels moved in and became so active. And when I first uh, moved there, our little farm, there was a paradise for children, for families. And uh, we lived really, really safe and, and had a good life. I have fond memories, really fond memories of my childhood there. One of the reasons why the drug cartels are so prevalent in this area is because it's incredibly remote. You can see behind me, it's all mountains, and there aren't too many police officers to sort of guard this area, and that's why the cartels feel they can run rampant here and do whatever they want. But it wasn't always this way. The family in this case is Mormons, and Mormons actually have a long history of living in this area of Mexico. Many started moving there back in the 1830s, believing that it would be a safe place to practice their religion in peace. But now, those that still live there have no choice but to pack up their families and move somewhere safer. Only have I lost a wife and, and two children. 
uh, but uh, I've having to move uh, the rest of my family uh, with really no place to go at this point. Last Thursday, David, Devin, and the rest of their extended family gathered to lay some of their loved ones to rest. The toughest part for me was uh, was saying goodbye. Yeah. One of the worst parts of this ordeal is that those children lost their lives in such a horrific way and they had barely begun to live at all. Their futures were stolen from them and for no reason at all. This just goes to show how truly soulless the cartel can be. At the time, Mexico's president said they would handle this alone. But now, Mexico asking for the FBI's help. And earlier today, Mexico's public security minister announcing they've detained individuals possibly connected with this attack. As the investigation continues, Devin wants the world to remember the family he lost, including his mother and two little brothers. While these families do want to see the people responsible for this unthinkable violence to be caught and prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, they recognize that there is nothing that can be done at this point that will bring their loved ones. But they do hope that their story will help others by spreading awareness about the true dangers the cartels pose in Mexico. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more.